I'm sure a number of you are looking at the title of this video that go a ways back with me and be like, oh, of course he's going to sit there and take an opportunity to crap on Cody Rhodes. Of course he would. He's a bitter old man. Well, to be fair, it will always be, to some degree, fuck Cody Rhodes. But that shit's way in the past for the most part, honestly. As much as I look at Cody Rhodes and I don't like him or respect him very much, because he is a liar, he is full of shit, and he's proven himself to be over the years. And everything I said about him in 2018 is basically true. Things that I said were true. Things that he said were patently false and bullshit. You could not like me, you can hate me, and still acknowledge that I was right. Because I was. And logical people with functioning brains understand that and can appreciate that. So no, I don't like him. And frankly, I've always thought he was a good talent, a good performer, but he was not somebody that I looked at and said, this is a future megastar. Like, this is a guy that should absolutely be at the top of the rest of a wrestling company, a major wrestling company. He should be one of your marquee stars. I've never looked at him like that. I've never said he fully and completely sucks and can't do anything good. I don't think you can go back and see that I've said any of that. I don't think so. However, like, let's be clear. We're not exactly dealing with a golden era, golden age of wrestling. If you're into the karate and the gymnastics and the ninjutsu fucking phony looking bullshit, it's probably the greatest time of your life. Hey, everybody looks like me. And instead of acknowledging, hey, that's probably a problem, you think that that's great. But it's not a banner era for wrestling by any stretch of the imagination. And one thing that I can do, that many of you are unable to, is I can separate my personal taste, my personal feelings, and think about business. And say, I can't? Bullshit. I can. You can. A number of you cannot. And when it comes to Cody Rhodes, I can look past the lying. I can look past some of the things that grate me and annoy me about the individual, the person, the character, the performer. And I can look at the bigger picture and be realistic about it. Because we have to be realistic when it comes to Cody Rhodes, the WWE, and professional wrestling. While obviously Cody Rhodes leaving AEW and joining WWE in this year wasn't the biggest news story. That was obviously Vince McMahon being forced to retire from WWE. Cody Rhodes, one of the EVPs of AEW, jumping ship and coming back to Vince's company was a big damn deal. That was a big get for the WWE and at least a moderately to big size loss for AEW. And I have to confess, like his return at WrestleMania, it felt like a star had returned back home. Shit, he was booked well, I'd argue almost too well, beating Seth Rollins three straight times, even when he had the freaking torn peck and he looked all types of ridiculous with the Frickin' bruises all over his frickin' chest and his neck and everything. He looked like shit. And they still had him win. Like, they booked him too well, you could argue. But, you know, it was certainly going well. And it sucked that he got hurt and had to miss over half of this year. Because you bring him in, you're expecting to do some big things with him, and then it doesn't happen. And we just saw Cody Rhodes give an interview, a little bit of an interview this week during Raw or whatever. And we know he's set to return. And that's going to bring all types of speculation about what's going to happen with him and what he's going to do in 2023. There's a lot of speculation around whether he's going to come back and he's going to win the Royal Rumble. And I will tell you, like, while he wouldn't be my first choice, there is certainly a case and an argument to be made and a good one that he should be the person that wins the Rumble. Like I said, it wouldn't be my choice, but he is a choice. He is certainly a logical contender for that spot. There's also a lot of speculation around what's going to happen for him come WrestleMania. Like, do you really try to force him back into a thing with Seth Rollins? Do you do a character change with Cody Rhodes or do you keep it back the same? Is he the one that you send to ultimately dethrone the tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns? And I could see why people think that he should be. 
I could see why they want to send Cody Rhodes in that direction. But I want to be very clear here. I do not agree with that assessment. The WWE should not send Cody Rhodes towards Roman Reigns. No, they shouldn't. Cody Rhodes should not be the one to dethrone the tribal chief. And I'm going to explain why now. It has nothing to do with personal feelings or anything else because I look at Cody Rhodes and I do say, like in 2023, when you scan the landscape of WWE, yeah, Cody Rhodes should probably be a world champion in that company. Like how many options do you really have? How many options really make sense? How many options could people actually buy? Like at this point in this stage, people could actually buy Cody Rhodes as a WWE champion or the universal champion or what have you. But it shouldn't come at the expense of ending the reign of the tribal chief. It just shouldn't. Because for me, my perspective, my opinion, I feel like there are five paths to take for getting the belts off of Rome. If you insist you want to do it, like there are ways to do it that work, and then there are ways to do it that won't. One of those ways is just something as simple as, hey, each show needs its own damn world title. We need two world champions. Um, so we're going to split them up. We're going to put one of them on the line at the Royal Rumble. That way Roman doesn't have to job out and lose it. He could be a champion, blah, blah, blah. I think he could do it. It's probably not going to be very satisfactory for folks. It's not going to feel like it has a great payoff there. But you probably could do worse, right? You could. Um, it wouldn't be my preferred or chosen option, but I'm sure that's one of the options that's being considered by WWE is they're thinking about what do you do with Cody Rhodes? What do you do as we get into WrestleMania season? What are you going to do with the Royal Rumble? Like it begs some of those questions. You could always, the other option, option two is you could have a tag match where one of the Usos or Sami Zayn loses Roman Reigns, one of the world titles. Like maybe you say he puts the universal title on the line. And then he's in a tag match against, you know, a Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. I'm just throwing random names out here, but you get the illustration of the point. And then it's one of the members of Roman's team, but not Roman himself, that takes the pinfall that cost him the freaking title. You could do that. I personally like that option a little bit better than the first one. But it's also probably not the option I would go with, although there is some appeal to it. I really feel like, though, there are three primary options, paths you should take if you're thinking about taking one of the belts or both of the belts off of Roman Reigns at this point. You either go biggest star possible, in that case would be The Rock, because there is, again, natural story, natural connection, very easy to tell that to the story to the audience in a way that makes sense. As unlikely as it would be at this stage for The Rock to come in and become a world champion in WWE in his damn 50s. Like, stranger shit has happened. You just never know. Maybe you could make it happen in some type of unique way. Probably not. But it's an option you can consider. The next option is you go with the best story to make it mean the most. Roman has been champion for two and a half years now. You can't just have him lose for the fuck all of it. You can't just have him lose to any random person. You can't just have him lose to this guy or that guy just because they won the Royal Rumble. And frankly, when I look at Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes is not the biggest star possible to beat The Rock. That's not an insult to Cody Rhodes, but how many people are the fucking Rock? Right? Or even if you wanted to say, well, freaking have Stone Cold do it. Like, again, getting crazy here. Or Cena do it or whatever. You're getting crazy here. But think about it. Like, Cody's not on that level. We're not being crazy here. He wouldn't call himself on that level. He knows better. But he's also not the best story. Now, you could probably craft a good story out of Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. But it's not nearly as interesting of a story as if it's The Rock or if it's one of the Usos or if it's Sami Zayn, the honorary oos. When you think about it from a pure storytelling and emotional connection standpoint, Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania for one of the titles or for both of the titles connects with the audience in a much more meaningful way than Cody Rhodes 
versus Roman Reigns. Cody represents more of a, hey, maybe the belt will finally come off of Roman versus, hey, Sammy is that type of entertaining dude and he's been through it and we want to see Roman get his comeuppance. It means more. Again, you can have a good story with Cody and Roman. It will not be the same as if you did Sammy versus Roman. And if you can't see that, then I don't know what the hell you've been watching in 2022. The other option, which is the ideal option, if it makes sense is you have the next guy, and I mean the next guy, beat him. Roman's carried this for so long to the point where it becomes a bit of a who's going to beat Roman problem, right? Like he's had it for two and a half freaking years now. Like it's a long time to be the champion. There's almost going to be a bit of a letdown when he finally does lose it because it's been so long, it'll feel so different. But there's also the positive there of he's had it for so long that the person that you christen and anoint to be the one to take it off of him could be made overnight just like that. And again, no disrespect to Cody Rhodes, but is he really the next guy? He's what, 37, going to be 38 in 2023? How long do you actually think he's going to wrestle on a full-time basis? How long do you even think he's going to be with WWE? Who knows? He's a guy with the family now. He's got interest outside of wrestling too, certainly. Like, how long do you think he's going to want to stay on the daily grind like this? You know what I mean? So, he's not the next guy. The next guy is somebody like a Braun Breaker who's in his mid-freaking 20s who you can envision being the guy in the top spot for the next decade or so, similar to how about a decade ago you could envision that Roman was going to be the top guy in that spot for a long time to come. If it's going to be somebody to knock Roman Reigns off, why not have it be the guy that's going to be the next guy? And when you look at those last three options, which to me are the most appealing of the, of the options that you have, Cody just doesn't fit there. He's not the biggest star that could be Roman. He won't bring the best story. And he's not the next guy. Like, having Cody Rhodes be the one to beat Roman Reigns just doesn't really feel right. Doesn't make sense. And I don't think it's the best thing for Roman Reigns' character. I don't think it's the best thing for Cody Rhodes' character. I don't think it's the best thing for the talent roster. I don't think it's the best thing for WWE. It certainly doesn't need to happen if you go with one of the first two options I floated out there. That could be a way to get creatively around it. Um, it just, Roman's a monster now. And they have to be careful how they vanquish him. You have to either really make it matter uh, and with as big of a spotlight as possible, see The Rock. You have to give that emotional connection that will just hit people differently. See Sami Zayn. Or you have to go with that next guy, whoever you deem it to be, whoever the company deems it to be. I just use Braun Breaker as a placeholder because he would certainly be an option, right? Here is a second generation guy, comes from a known wrestling family. Like, stupid name, but you know, hey, what the hell? Like, those all feel like the best possible options if you decide it's time to dethrone the tribal chief. I don't have a problem if you say Cody Rhodes should be champion in 2023. I happen to not disagree with it. But I think Cody is better suited and the company is better suited and Roman is better suited if Cody perhaps is the guy that beats the guy that beat Roman. Or beats the guy that beats the guy that beats the guy that beat Roman. Or you find a different way to put one of the title, world titles on him. I just, I can't envision Cody Rhodes beating Roman Reigns having the same type of payoff, short and long-term, as some of the other options that I selected. Now, you tell me what you think in the comments, whether I'm off the mark or not. Like, Cody coming back is a positive for WWE in 2023, can bring some good things to the table, but he should not be the one to dethrone the head of the table and the tribal chief. He should not.